Hi, I'm Philip Green from the Mark Wilson Group at the University of Toronto. Today I'll present to you how we found a way to control cluster intermediates in the synthesis of lead sulfide nanocrystal. A pervasive goal of nanoparticle synthesis is the attainment of the narrowest size distributions, both out of fundamental interest and device applications where a flat energy landscape is correlated to performance. For PBS nanocrystals, we usually quantify the size issue by looking at the full of half max of the first extonic peak of the absorption spectrum. Given a certain size or band gap energy, we would like to be able to synthesize nanoparticle ensembles at the minimum or lower of the curve shown to the right, which shows the best literature reports of the full of half max versus size found in literature. To reproducibly achieve such synthesis, we need to better understand the mechanisms of nucleation and growth. As demonstrated by the HENS group, the minimum size dispersity is attained near completion. At this point, the average particle size is inversely proportional to the number of nucleate particles, a quantity which is directly proportional to the monomer generation rate as per Sugimoto theory and elegantly demonstrated by the Owen group. Thus, tuning GM, the monomer generation rate, allows for this desired size to be obtained at reaction completion, yielding the desired size distribution. The classical picture involves Monomers form at a rate GM from precursor species, which are then consumed to either nucleation or growth. This can be written as the mass balance equation where the monomer generation rate GM is equal to the monomer consumption rate to nucleation JN and the monomer consumption rate to growth JG. However, recent mechanistics advance have revealed the presence of cluster intermediates, which can either be magic size or amorphous. These species can be in dynamic equilibrium with the monomer or be the direct monomer to NC nucleation and growth. The presence of such species acts to further partitioning the monomer, leading to competition between the nucleation of nanocrystals or clusters by adding a third partitioning rate, JPNC. Thus, to fully control the reaction, new handles to manipulate the cluster concentration must be developed. We then sought to identify cluster species in the synthesis of PBS nanocrystals. Measuring the emission spectrum of aliquots extracted during a reaction under dilute conditions, we observed our first evidence of the presence of such a cluster. As time progresses, shown from the top to bottom on the y-axis, we initially observed an emission feature at 735 nanometer. This feature grew in intensity without changing position or shape. As the intensity reached a maximum, a new red-shifted feature consistent with nanocrystals could be observed and to continually shift the lower energies until the feature at 735 nanometers had disappeared. Taking a slice in time, we observed two species, a dark solution consistent with the red-shifted nanocrystals and a red solution containing sub-2 nanometer extremely lead-rich particles. Taking the absorption spectrum, we observe that the red solution is fairly featureless. However, monitoring its evolution overnight, we observe its conversion to small nanocrystals through an isosbestic point. This indicates that the red solution contains species distinct from even the smallest PBS nanocrystals, possibly being even smaller. Going further, we perform three sulfur injections and each time observing a rise of the 735 nanometer emission feature, followed by the formation of growing nanocrystals. The 735 nanometer feature then decayed without any change in shape or position until the reaction was complete. Thus, we name this feature a pre-nucleation cluster with the characteristics that their formation precedes nanocrystal nucleation, growth stops when clusters are absent, the clusters are metastable and eventually convert or are consumed to the formation of PBS nanocrystals. They are present even if we change the synthetic conditions such as temperature, ligand, concentration, and others. This behavior is reminiscent of the COSERS group identification of an indium phosphide cluster. Representing our observation schematically, we observe a long PNC reaction lifetime leading to delayed nucleation and large nanocrystals at completion. This hampers the synthesis of small nanocrystals as the reaction would have to be quenched when all the nucleation and growth dynamics are convolved. Further, the presence of cluster competes with the nanocrystal nucleation, suppressing JN to the benefit of JPNC. 
Therefore, we need a way to control JPNC and push the equilibrium back to monomers available to nucleation. How can we achieve control? Well, Lewis spaces such as amines have been shown to promote Z-type ligand displacements on the surface of nanocrystals such as PDS. And the group of Brandy Cossert has shown that adding amines to the synthesis of indium phosphide nanocrystals suppresses the indium phosphide cluster in a similar mechanism to Z-type ligand displacement. Thus, we added amines in the hope of bypassing the PNC and regaining control over the kinetics. The addition of amines such as oleolamine immediately changed the reaction. Instead of a slowly rising PNC feature, we observe a direct nucleation and growth of small PBS nanocrystals. This is consistent with a fast burst nucleation through a strong JN, the monomer consumption denucleation, leading to small nanocrystals at reaction completion. Further, adding amine mid-reaction can be shown to immediately suppress the PNC concentration and lead to rapid nucleation. In the example presented, amines were introduced once the first nucleation had already been initiated, leading to a second nucleation event and a bimodal size distribution. The suppression of the PNC can thus induce fast nucleation, shifting the equilibrium to the monomer and reinstating classical nucleation and growth. To gain more insight, we added amines with different PKAs. Going from low PK amines such as aniline to progressively stronger bases such as aminopyridines, benzylamines, and alkylamines, the final nanocrystal size can efficiently be tuned. When a low PK amine is used, the PNC concentration is long lived, resulting in the slow nucleation and growth of large nanocrystals. As the PK is raised, the PNC kinetics are shortened and the nanocrystal size reduced until the highest PK amines are used, such as cyclohexylamine, and no more PNC are observable, yielding ultra small PBS nanocrystals at completion. Returning to the previous framework, we explain our result through a PK dependent JPNC. Being strong when no amines are present and absent with high PK amines, this can be extended to the number of nucleated particles being proportional to GM, but this time counterbalanced by the rate of PNC formation. Thus, for the same monomer generation rate GM, if no amines are used, JPNC is large, and a reduced monomer generation rate is observed, yielding a small amount of nucleated particles at completion. On the other hand, if high PK amines are used, there is no competition for monomers, and the full potential of GM is observed, yielding a large number of nuclei and small particles at completion. A similar mechanism of action can be achieved by adding glycol ethers such as diglime, triglime, and tetraglime. The former, yielding the smallest nanocrystals at reaction completion, match with short PNC reaction lifetime. The stronger potency of tetraglime can be explained through its larger binding strength to the lead precursor yielding smaller nanocrystals at reaction completion, consistent with a reduced JPNC. Now that we have shown that amine and glycol ethers can efficiently tune the final particle size at reaction completion, the question is, did we obtain conditions that yield small size distributions? The answer is yes. We can reproducibly synthesize small nanocrystals at reaction completion with record narrow full with half max and with absorption features extending to the visible with energies as high as 560 nanometers and clear visible emission. Thus, we have shown that PBS nanocrystal synthesis involves a cluster. This cluster is reproducible for many conditions. It competes with nanocrystal nucleation, yielding large nanocrystals at completion. However, using amines or glycol ethers, the cluster can efficiently be manipulated to yield any size at reaction completion with record dispersity. This work highlights the role of complexing agents to control the rates involved in the formation of nanocrystals. Finally, I would like to thank the Wilson Group at the University of Toronto, the organizers of the conference, and all the people who listen, and I look forward for the rest of the conference. Thank you.